Good evening. Can everyone hear me okay? Thumbs up? Okay. I always like seeing thumbs up. That's great. Um, thank you for being here with us on uh, Monday, Thursday. We also will be here tomorrow at 7 p.m. for Good Friday, and then Easter at 9.30 on Sunday. Um, just a couple of things about the service. Now, normally, after confession and forgiveness, we invite people to come forward and be anointed. Um, this year, obviously, we can't do that as well, but I will come to your car, and similar to Ash Wednesday, where I masked, put on gloves, and then anointed you, or put, made the sign of the cross with long Q-tips, I have found my extra ones, and so we will be doing that again with oil. So if that is something that you would like when I come to your car, you can roll down your window. If you don't want to be anointed tonight, that is also fine. So um, I'll come around and we'll have that at the beginning of the service then after our confession and forgiveness. And then per usual, we will be having communion too. I will come with wafers. And Dean will be following with trays of plastic communion glasses that you can take yourselves and then get rid of so we won't be cross-contaminating with people touching each other's. Um, we do have gluten-free, so if that is something that you need, we have that for you. All right, I think that are, is all of our announcements, so we'll begin with our prelude. We'll now begin with confession and forgiveness. Friends in Christ, in this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the struggle to which we are called at baptism. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. On this night, let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor and enter the celebration of the great three days, reconciled with God and with one another. Mm -hmm. 
Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By, the grace, by grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. And Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. So I'll be coming around now. So if you are interested in being anointed, just have your window rolled down when I get to you. And for those of you who are watching from home, I'll say to you, in obedience to the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you of all your sins. Amen. And then, in obedience, we command to love one another. I forgive you of all your sins. Then, Andy, in obedience to the command to love one another, I forgive you of all your sins. All right. Let us go.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment, to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts, and give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading for tonight is from Exodus, the 12th chapter. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month they, shall t they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb from each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, um, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire, with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until morning you shall burn. And this is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of our Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival of the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today is Psalm 116 and will be read responsibly. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplication. For the Lord has given ear to me whenever I called. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things God has done for me? I will lift the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. Precious in your sight, O Lord, is the death of your servants. O Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all of God's people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Our second reading for tonight is from 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, You drink it. Um, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And tonight our gospel is according to John, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus answered, You do not know what I, now what I am doing, but later you will understand. But Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. So Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. He, for he knew who was to betray him. And for this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he'd washed their feet and put on their robe and returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set for you an example, that you should also do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jewish people, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Tonight in our readings, we hear about how sacrifice leads to the freedom to be in relationship with God. In our first reading, we hear the story of Passover how the firstborn children of the Egyptians were killed as the final plague to convince them to let the Israelites go. We see God's mercy as he passed over the Israelite children who had sacrificed animals and put blood on their doorposts. This is the plague, chilling to think about, that finally allows them to leave. But part of this freedom was to be called back to be God's people. To go worship God is the reason that Moses gives when he tells the Pharaoh to let God's people go. He wants freedom so that they can reclaim their position as God's beloved. And as we hear again as Passover is celebrated in our gospel, 
That sacrifice is a part of salvation for us too. That through Christ's body and blood being poured out for us, we are brought again into relationship. Christ shows this act of service by washing his disciples' feet, by making them clean while lowering himself to this self-sacrificing position. That he talked of what he would experience in just a few hours by predicting a body broken, blood staining the ground for the sake of the world. Now this has always been what Christ has been about, a love that changes everything, a love that doesn't care about position or status, a love that instead gives up all it has for the sake of others, a love that takes risk. And so today, as we remember this foot washing, as we hear words of forgiveness, as we take communion, we understand that this love flows out from God's abundant grace. And this grace is what makes all of the difference. We are transformed by it into new people, all because of what Christ has done for us. As Christ prepared for his death the next day, he talked of a love that calls us into relationship, relationship with God and relationship with others. I know I've told this before, but one of my seminary professors drew this out in class for us one day, this diagram that is made in the shape of a cross, this love between God and us and this love between each other. This love asks us to understand that because of the mercy of God that has saved us, that has forgiven us, we then look at the world differently. We seek out ways to serve, ways to care for each other, ways to share this hope with others. We kneel at the feet of the forgotten and the lowly and show God's love. We give of our time and our lives to be examples of this love, a love that stoop to wash the feet of others. Now sometimes this mission is hard to do. It's hard to put ourselves in the place of the disciples, imagining that this act was for us too. We know our hearts. We know how awkward it is to let our perfect God see the dark places that are inside of us that we also know we need to work on. But the thing is, is Christ already knows all of it. And he still comes into those dirty places and cleans them. He comes to our broken places and heals us. Without shying away from the pain that we've caused, Christ comes in and gives us a new start. And then he calls us to give that same new chance to others. He asks us to share this love and to show its grace. As he has washed his disciples' feet, he asks them to wash others' feet as well. Now, as I've had the joy of being the spiritual director at Footsteps, I've gotten to see the kids share in this ritual with others as part of the retreat. On Holy Night, they read this passage as the leaders of the weekend kneel bending over to wash all of the candidates' feet. It's a humbling experience of service and of care. Because this isn't a rough and terse experience, if you think about it. This act of washing each other's feet is gentle and filled with concern. It's beautiful to watch, as I've experienced it both as a candidate and a leader, and now as a spiritual director. With gentle grace and with hope-filled assurance, these kids wash each other's feet and care for them, letting them know that God is present and that love is the impetus to action. We are reminded then that we are called to serve as disciples of Christ, to serve all of our neighbors, which means everyone, to follow Christ's example, to heal the broken, to speak mercy to the fearful, to wash the dirty places in, of the world from injustice, and calling for newness and for light in the midst of darkness. 
And so tonight, as we start the three holy days, we pray that God comes into our hearts and cleanses them. That this love tells us the truth about ourselves. That we are loved, that we are claimed, and that we are forgiven. Nothing could ever change that. And then because and through this good news, we are to go out and remind others of this with gentle words, with actions of justice, with hope that holds back the brokenness of this world. We give thanks tonight to a God who stoops down to show us the way. Through humble love, we are able to see the face of God. Amen. We will now sing our hymn of the day. United by the servant love of God in Christ, we pray this holy night for the needs of the world. You call your people to hand on what we, what we receive from you. Form all the baptized into teachers of faith. 
from one generation to the next, give your church hunger for your promises in the sacraments and joy in receiving and sharing your word. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Your creation provides all that we need. Cleanse and protect the water that you have given for washing and drinking, water on which all life depends. Sustain crops and herds that provide food. Teach us how to live so that there is enough for all. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You redeemed your people from slavery. Preserve people throughout the world who flee violence and oppression. Establish just leadership in place of tyranny and peace in place of war. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Jesus loved his followers to the end. Grant assurance of that love to all who need it. Those living with guilt, those struggling to forgive, those who are lonely or overlooked. Heal the sick and embrace the dying. Especially tonight, we pray for Bob, Ruth, Doreen, Leona, Erlene, Jan, Sarah, Joanne, Barb, Dot, Judy, Janet, Sandy, Ed, Pastor Mumford, Doug, Joan, Sue, Karen, Nels, Ron, Patricia, Jim, Nick, Brian, Tressa, Denise, Dr. Sion, Cindy, Kay, Jane, Pastor Washell, Bishop Lozano, Iona, Amy, Brian, Betty, Yvette, Rod, Jennifer, Sarah, Zoe, and the families of Ray and of Dick, and all those that we name now either aloud or in our hearts. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Jesus washed the feet of the one who betrayed him. Inspire this congregation's ministries of service that we love as Jesus loved us. Give us renewed courage to serve. Bless the ministry of deacons throughout the church. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Your glory shown in the suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus. We thank you for generations of the faithful who have proclaimed um, proclaimed our Lord's death. Unite us with them in hope until he comes again. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Hear these and all of our prayers, O God, in the name of the one who loves us to the end, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ whose suffering and death gave salvation to all. You gather your people around the tree of the cross, transforming death into life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God, Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. 
In great love, you sent to us Jesus, your son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. And the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all glory and honor, now and forever. Amen. And now, if you'll join me in praying the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus draws the whole world to himself. Come to this meal and be fed. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world.
right? In the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in a wonderful sacrament, you strengthen us with the saving power of your suffering, death, and resurrection. May this sacrament of your body and blood so work in us that the fruits of your redemption will show forth in the way that we live. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Those who fear the Lord, the poor shall eat and 